So we've got our collar here that we've just prepared. We've got our neckline. We're sewing on the wrong side of the shirt, which is the inside of the shirt. And you can tell if you've, if you've got the right side because the, the facing here, the wider facing, is visible on the top here. Okay, so just to get us going, we're going to use our notches. And and just matching out those notches and popping a pin in to make sure you're controlling how this gets sewn in. If you just tr try sewing it in from one end to the other, you'll end up with a difference somewhere. Yeah, it'll it either end up here yeah. or yeah. it'll end up back yeah. here. Yeah. So that's it's why. To control it. That's why we've got the notches yeah. there. You've got like a straight line and a curved line sewing it together. It's not that easy when you first start sewing to do that. Having said that though, it's easier to do with a with a smaller seam allowance. Mm, That's why yeah. a, a six mil seam allowance is is really good for a neckline. Um, in commercial patterns, they use one point five, and it's pretty much it's impossible yeah, to sew a um, yeah, it's crazy to sew a one point five seam allowance around a neckline. Okay, so we've got that all controlled. And that's going to make life much easier. Alright, so we've got our little step here and that where this folds back, where the outer collar folds back, we've got a um, we've got that six mil seam allowance there. So to begin with we want to just sit that just a millimeter to the inside there. Why are we doing that? Well, I don't know we'll if I can see. explain it right now. I think, we'll yes, see. you will You will <laughs> see. It's about lining things up so that they flow through evenly and don't have little steps on the outside. It'll be on the other side, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You have to be really careful that because this, the necklines go onto the bias here and there, it's really important that you don't stretch things as you go along because the um, the collar is on the straight grain, so it's not going to stretch, but the neckline will easily stretch. And having the neckline on the feet dog helps to get it to go in as well. Um, having the collar on top. Yes, exactly. There's no way you can sew this neckline together with the with the neckline on top. It just wouldn't be happening. Um, you can see that I'm pulling the collar away, and because it's easy for it to sit over the edge, so I have to pull it so that the raw edges of the collar match up with the raw edges of the neckline. And if you get to any of these points, like if you go from the center front to the shoulder, you know, the first section we did, and it's not matching, don't keep going. Actually stop, unpick it, and redo it so that it matches. So you don't want to get to this point, like I said before, where, you know, like you've got, you know, a centimeter hanging yeah. over. Actually, that's not never going to happen. You get to here and you have it like this, mm. you know, and that, that can't happen. You need to, I mean, we're doing this last bit here. You need to Same make sure the end, isn't it? A bit of just the tiniest little bit back yeah. from the end there. And you can, you, what you might need to do too is just manipulate the fabric underneath a little bit to make sure that there's no pleats or tucks or anything. And that you're keeping the edges of the fabric together. That's important. And really important when you get to the end here, you can see this this edge of the oh, of the know. fold here. So when we're coming to the end here, we're sitting it a tiny bit back, and you can see this folded edge here. And we want the stitching, this stitch line, to line up with that folded edge. Don't, touch that in. Don't sew on top of it. You can see. So because we still want this to be open. But we want to get really close to that folded edge there and that's because of the next step that we're going to do 
Now I wouldn't press this at this stage because um, you'll probably just end up with pleats here or something. So now what we're going to do is we need to stitch on the outside. And this is tucking the seam allowance, the six mil under. Yeah, so that's why we we pressed this yeah, under it's before. Pressed, so yeah. it's or, it's already pressed because it's be it would be really annoying to have to do it now. Yeah. So and you can see here. Um, that's why we pull this back a little bit because of all these the bulk of the seam allowances here they're all going towards the inside of the collar so so we we push this around here a little bit and you can see that it's actually snuck back a little bit uh, anyway and this might seem a little bit funny too but what we're going to do is we're not going to start right on this corner when we're stitching this layer together, we're going to stitch, start stitching on the shoulder here. Okay. And that's because it, what, what will happen if we start stitching there, we'll get a big lump of thread mm -hmm. on the other side. Yeah, it'll Whereas if you know if it's one continuous row of stitching, you know that'll just be a stitch line there. It won't be a you know this, a big chunk of stitching is going all the way around the collar. On yeah. The edges, isn't it? Yeah. So you can yeah. start somewhere else, and that's fine. So I've got my my notch here, and we're going to match that up with my shoulder notch. And again, this is all very obvious because I'm sewing black on cream. So we want the we want the this folded edge here. We want it to sit just on top or just a tiny bit over the edge of our original row of stitching. And we're talking about like half a millimeter over. Yes. It's not much at all. And it should just line up and if you've sewn Yeah, exactly. So I didn't I didn't actually look at the center back notch there, which I should have. Um, but when I'm getting to this point, you know, like the notches yeah. still match up there anyway. If you uh, like I said before, if you get to this point and the notches the notch doesn't line up with the shoulder, stop yeah. and then go back and fix it. Okay, so again, see this the seam here? It's the tiniest little bit towards the inside, so that when you look at the outside, you can't see that seam. Just uh, trimming any tail threads, thread tails back as you go. You don't want them sticking out, it's easy to get rid of them as you go. do your shirt just use the same color thread like a wider cream thread um, because you don't want if there are any little inaccuracies you really don't want to point them out and yeah. they, they will look worse in, in black thread um, we're only using black so that you can see what um, where Mark is sewing so you can see out. all of my inconsistencies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I can assure you there aren't any <laughs> You might want to do a, t a different colour thread for a, a design feature, um, but yeah, you do have to, your sewing has to be pretty perfect to get away with that. You always have to do the neck um, edge here as a like as a pin stitch because if you sew if you sew further up. It's, this is just going to flop out this yeah, raw edge but you could fabric. yeah you could sew this one as a pin stitch and these edges here as a welt stitch like you know like a foot width but um, I'm just keeping it consistent here with the, with the close to the edge stitch Just 
it also makes it easier to control those corners too. Yep, so all that back tapping is over there, you won't notice it as much up on the shoulder as you would at the centre front. Yeah, exactly. So I do have a little a little wobble there going around the corner, but um, I'm not going to unpick it. Like we keep saying, in in a matching thread, that would be a lot less noticeable. And sometimes too, you can you can spend half your time unpicking and redoing things. So you have to make a bit of a judgment call as to what you're going to um, what you're going to alter.